Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. We're almost 800 subscribers and it's like, dude, what the fuck? That is super cool to see. Today, we'll be talking about how to date in abundance as an Asian male in 2022. This is a topic that I was talking to a friend about that really got my wheels spinning about what it means to be in abundance is how to date. I know I get a lot of inquiries and a lot of my client calls on how to date in 2022 and build this abundance mentality. And honestly, a lot goes into it. I think the number one thing is the belief that you can do something. I feel like you have to be a little crazy in life to change the circumstances you're currently in. You have to envision something that's not yet real and you're going to do everything and put everything on the line to create that alternate reality until it is yours. And you do have to be a little crazy to believe in this idea that you can change and do and get the life you want. And number one thing is just valuing yourself as an individual. I think a lot of Asian men get lost because we have a lot of these stereotypes and discriminations against us, but realize like, guys, it doesn't have to hold you back and you have to have that belief that you can overcome these things. I think the number one thing that really separated me from my peers, some of my Asian peers in dating is the idea that I view myself as men. I don't view myself as an Asian guy. I don't view myself as the Asian guy whose name is Min. I view myself as men who happens to be Asian, but it's just a limiting belief, guys. You realize like, look, just realize some girls are into you, some girls won't be, and that's completely okay. But just realize like you have inherent worth and self value. And that definitely develops over time as you mature. And the idea of putting yourself in situations that are uncomfortable and developing that self-reliance in yourself to realize like, I am confident, I'm courageous and I can keep on going. And I think that comes with becoming a competent individual as you grow up and especially in dating guys. I know dating is a super difficult thing if you don't really um, have a lot of experience with it. But I'd say the number one thing is learn social skills and social awareness. Learn how to make friends, guys. Get off the video games, go outside, find some hobbies that involve other people and get out there and start developing your network and your social circle. That is super important. Get used to talking to people that you're not used to and learn how to develop and have a conversation and see things from other people's points of view. And trust me, it's very uncomfortable, it's scary, and it feels like everyone has social anxiety these days. And trust me, guys, like you have to be a little anxious when you talk to someone who's new because it's a foreigner, it's someone you're unknown. You don't know if they're a stranger, you don't think they're cool, you could be a serial killer. I think that inherent fear is okay, but realize like, okay, cool, I'm stepping out of my comfort zone, I'm developing it. Because think long-term, you wanna become socialized, interact with people. The number one thing is develop social skills as an Asian guy. If you are just hanging out with the same people, get out, make some new friends, go out, do things alone, go travel to a city, go travel to your local downtown if it's safe and go to coffee shops, go to art museums, go to bookstores, go to like, I don't know, whatever you want to go and just get yourself out in public and be okay and comfortable with being alone because eventually you find friends that way and you have to get out of your social circle that you are comfortable with. I mean, honestly, if you are an amazing friend group and you're having a lot of dates and you're really content, that's totally fine. But if you're really not happy, you have to do something different. And the whole idea is learning how to go out on your own and stand on your own two feet. And I feel like the abundance mentality is just so much beyond dating. I feel like it's the idea of valuing yourself and worth and do things that um, you love about yourself. I think the number one thing is go work out, guys. Go and work out, hit the gym. That's the number one common denominator of being successful is pushing your limits and growing. You're gonna feel so fucking good. Be full of endorphins. It's fucking, just feel really good. And you're gonna look fantastic and you're gonna start um, dressing better. I think working out inherently is kind of linked to fashion because what happens is you're gonna keep working out and you're gonna outgrow the clothes you used to wear. So you have to go out and shop and you're gonna find clothing that really fits and contours to your body. Man, you're gonna look sharp. And I think fashion is really important in abundance because I think fashion, the way you dress as a beacon or signal to the world of, hey, I have social awareness, I have social skills, I know what's cool, I know what's not cool. And you identi identify yourself as a part of a group, of a popular group that has social awareness of dressing well. And I think that's really good. I think looking sharp is very important because when you dress sharp, you're telling everyone, hey, look, I have enough awareness to know that you guys care about what I'm wearing or I like to look presentable in all circumstances and I can meet people that are like-minded. I think it's very important. And if you don't really have an idea of fashion, guys, just go on Instagram. Go on Instagram, look at some people, you like the way they dress, you realize like, oh, they have like, uh, like slim jeans that's tapered and tailored and they have like this, oh, like a slim fit sh a shirt and this, I don't know, just figure it out. Start adopting um, a different style. I'm not telling you to go break your bank account, definitely not, but I think it's okay to invest in quality clothing that you can buy it for life and wear on numerous occasions. I think wearing outfits, just color neutral, outfits will be very, very smart because you can mix and match without breaking the bank versus if you get a bright red shirt, you can only wear that 
uh, once versus if you get like a gray or black jeans, you can kind of like bounce it off a ton of outfits. I think that's really important. I think the idea of self-abundance is a belief that you are a capable individual and you can change and realize like, look, you may not be going on dates now, but you can get dates in the future. I think the number one thing is go and talk to everyone. Like I reiterated, you have to learn to talk to people of all classes, guys, girls, and build this library of archetypes of people you interact with. You're like, okay, cool. So these are people that died here. This is what's important to them. Or these people are outdoorsy and you find these are things are important to them. I think finding groups of people that you actually genuinely vibe with, trust me, I think dating as an Asian guy, you kind of have to go out and get a lot of shit of what you don't like. I think people mistake the idea that in dating you get a lot of what you do like. No, 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 I think the opposite is true. You get a lot of what you don't like and you have to eliminate that and find the girls and the qualities that you do like. And I think it's really important to do that. I would say the best probable way to develop healthy relationships and abundance mindsets, having an amazing friend group. I think relying on your peers is super important as a young adult and male. You develop a sense of community and the idea of someone having your back and just doing cool things with you. You have a cool friend group. You're gonna do really cool shit and it increases your odds of meeting someone fantastic because if you do cool shit, they're probably doing cool shit. You have a similar idea and similar uh, value system that you vibe with. And I think when you have really cool friends that go out and do stuff, you're just increasing your chances of bumping into the person you are supposed to be with or the girl you wanna be with, whatever you, your goals are. And I think by having really cool friends, they kind of hype you up and um, you're just living your life and you see like, oh, cool. Like if you got your friend groups going out to breweries every Friday and then you find a really cool girl that's a brewery, I mean, you guys have something in common and you guys love that thing. She fits right in your friend group. It doesn't feel forced. It's very natural because you guys are already doing these existing hobbies. You're not trying to fake it. You're just letting someone into your natural ecosystem. And I think that's super important is guys having really cool friends is amazing. I mean, I met Hadley through one of my female friends and that's just how everything just kind of worked out. I think the idea of like, if you're a really cool dude and you have this like really cool female friends, I mean, they can vouch for you because they're always on the lookout. They're like, Hey, I have this one friend that's single and I think you guys can vibe and trust me. They're like your cover letter. Like, Hey, this guy is fucking fantastic. He's good looking. He's smart, has a great job. And he's fucking like, pretty in shape like dude they'll speak up for you it makes everything so much easier if you have a female friend that vouches for you and they're doing all the hard work and you're kind of skipping all the ne unnecessary bullshit and i think the idea is if you go and approach women and just legitimately want to be their friends not and if you don't want anything i think that's okay but i'm, I'm going to say this carefully approach them for the sake of genuine friendships versus going out there and pretending to be their friend and hoping one day you can get with them. I think that's kind of shallow and you lead someone on. I don't think that's very fair or courageous. I think if you go out and you want to have intimacy with a woman, make that very apparent and be like, hey, like I want you as a potential girlfriend. I don't want to be your friend and just hoping. But like, honestly, I think having some just neutral girlfriends that can just have your back is super fun. I think having girls to go out with in your existing friend group is super cool. Cause then if you have a girl in the room, they see you have like female friends, it kind of like takes the edge off their shoulder. Like, okay, Hey, he's not a creep. He has enough awareness to have female friends. I think that's super important. That's only going to help him in the long term. So I say develop and invest in genuine friendships of the opposite sex and same gender. I think it'd be very, very important. I think if you don't have really good friends, it says a lot about you. Because I understand if you just move to a new city, but I think spend that time to develop that ecosystem because it'll pay dividends in the future versus just going out and approaching every single person you think is attractive. I mean, I don't think that's a great idea. I think legitimately become high value, have a really good life, have really great friends you want to hang out with, go get dinner with occasionally on the weekdays, have really cool hobbies and have a great paying job. I think that's the whole idea of abundance is build your life where you have every opportunity to be successful and not necessarily hold yourself down. So spend that extra time at your job, spend that extra time working out, spend that extra money on clothes and actually care about the way you present yourself. Just give yourself the best fighting chance to go and meet your potential partner and girlfriend. Now, I'm not saying this is easy and overnight process, guys. It's fucking takes time. Like it's super hard, especially if you don't have social skills or awareness. You have to slowly learn to develop that over time. I know my one-on-one -on -one coaching calls, we definitely talk about how to develop social skills and talk to people of the opposite um, sex and how to oh, go and approach and just figure out how to build a healthy, loving relationship. And
and just figure out what your goals. So if you want to do that, please email me at bedroomtalksconsults at gmail.com or follow me on Instagram at m.deep20 to see what I'm up to. But I think that's the number one thing is becoming socialized. I think the whole idea of abundance is just having really cool fucking people you can rely on. Have a really great social circle that will back you up, hype you up, put you in awesome scenarios where you can meet potential girlfriends. I think it's super great because think about your friends will always be there for you at the end of the day. And I think your friends will always be like on the look. I'm like, hey dude, like she's super cute, like go for it. Or um, they could also be your wingman or if you have female friends, they'll set you up or you just kind of live a great life doing really cool things. And I feel like that person you're supposed to be with, like dude, you'll meet her if you're just not expecting it. I think that's really important this idea of if you're in abundance, you love your life as a single individual, that you don't need the validation of another just to be fulfilled. Trust me, I'm in a relationship now with Hadley and it's fucking fantastic. I love her, fucking great. But I also, before I met her and still now, I'm content as an individual standing on my own two feet and I really do enjoy life. I think the way I viewed it was like, look, if she comes in my life, it brings a lot of value. If she doesn't come in my life, my life is still fucking great. And it's getting to a place of just being not needy and being content with who you are is super important in dating. I know a lot of Asian guys, we feel like we're kind of left out, but what other opportunity slash chance do you have? I think you have to go and do it and become really cool, high value and change the way the media and society views us as, as passive doormats. I think believing yourself because it's totally possible to have an amazing dating life in 2022. I would say, look, unless you're like top 1%, guys, get off the dating apps, go outside, build in real life connections, they'll pay dividends. And it's gonna take time. I think being patient with yourself is super important. I think that if you don't have great social skills from a young age, it's just like a skill in anything. You need some time and devote some effort and over a course of months, years, you'll get there and you'll be substantially better off than when you started. And I think that's the beautiful thing about dating in abundance. You can choose it anytime. It's all about the mentality and belief that you can do it. I think it's really cool to see other Asian men being successful in dating because realize like, yo, if I can do it, you guys can fucking do this too. Just put in the fucking work. Obviously you'll have your own obstacles and adversities, but you know, we all do, but what's the other opportunity or what's the other alternative? nothing sit there and bitch about it or go out there and change it if you guys have anything you guys want to further discuss email me or comment I'll always be there as always i wish you the best namaste